What's going on YouTube? Another day, another dollar in this beautiful world we call truck driving. Or this not so good economy we're dealing with. Now, I've been hanging out with Mr. Charlie, getting that good train in the air. I know you guys are still trying to figure out which company I'm with. Right now I'm hearing uh, a pilot and loves and I think one of you guys was still talking about Cisco or something like that. I hear what you're saying, truck drivers. I hear what you're saying. Those are all uh, great choices. So if you want to put your application in to Pilot or Loves or Cisco, you go to their website or uh, put your applications in. I think Pilot got ads going all over the place, all over Indeed. Loves, they got their own website. Uh, I don't know their website, but you go on their website and Put your zip code in. You can see exactly if they got a position available for you. Cisco, same same way. Okay, same way. I think Cisco hire any and everybody. I think they always got positions open. That's, that's a revolving door over there because that's tough work. I know they hiring here. Matter of fact, they, doing, they do walk-ins every Saturday from 8 to 12 right here in Nashville. So if you want to come off the road, Cisco got you. 8 to 12, you just go walk up there. They, they all over Indeed. Okay. But uh, anyways, that's not what this video is about. I uh, got a question from some of you guys asking about my authority insurance. Why did I cancel my authority insurance? Andrew, is it because you ran out of cash since you ran a cash operation? It's a good question. And it's not impossible. Uh, you can't quite be running a cash operation, run out of cash, and then you got to start a liquidating equipment like your trucks and trailers and I guess to try to like recoup money and pay off creditors and whatever else people do to avoid bankruptcy and stuff like that uh, all that stuff is possible okay but uh tell you what it was for me now for the 19,000th time I know you guys watch my channel, but I be having to remind truck drivers what it is that I do with my authority. So, for 19,000 times, if you just ain't seen it with your own eyes, I'm going to remind you, I am a pneumatic tanker driver. That's what I use my authority for, running pneumatic, okay? When pneumatic slows down, like it did last year, after, uh, you know, I was running in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, pneumatic has slowed down because what I was doing was seasonal work. In the wintertime, I tell everybody around me, you know, pneumatic, very tough to get work. I knew it. J. J. Lewis knew it. All of us knew it, okay? Of course, J. Lewis, he went over to the hopper division. Me, I ain't got no hopper, so I was looking into power only, uh, you know, uh, load out trailers, freaking uh, Tiki wheel, power only. JB Hunt, that's power only. You know, all this power only stuff, okay? And uh, I saw the rates, and it's just it just wasn't the type of rates that I operate my equipment for. That's all it came down to. You know, JB Hunt 360, I understand. Well, Andrew, man, if you reactivate your authority, man, you got to wait 90 days to haul JB Hunt. I understand, truck drivers. You do got to wait 90 days before you can haul JB Hunt. Uh, I personally wouldn't activate no authority to do anything with J.B. Hunt. That's just me, but I understand a lot of people, they may be new to getting the authority, and J.B. Hunt may have, you know, something to offer you. The rates may be decent for you. Uh, it's just not the, it's just not the type of rates that I haul for. It's, it's, we're just two different people, that's all. Just because I haul for... One set of rates don't mean that you can't haul for those same rates. Hey, you know, it's just we're just two different people. That's all. So, me, I wasn't getting my authority to haul for nothing on 360 low board, but people's people out there that do it all day long. You can go down the interstate, see some owner operator hook to a JB Hunt 360 trailer, and I'm pretty sure he'll tell you he's making it. So, you know, but anyways, moving along, came up with uh my authority renewal and at the time in november when it was time to renew of course i got a dirt cheap policy down payment was fifteen hundred dollars somewhere right in now monthly payment 
about 700 a month. So I was like, uh, we got a pneumatic crate. $1,500 to keep the insurance going. But what is it that I'm going to do throughout this winter time to uh, make a profit? You know, make money, continue to come in. Give me one second. There we go. We back. Kind of lost my train of thought. But what is it that I'm going to do throughout the winter time to keep income coming in? Now, I found uh, JB on here. Hit me up with some special freight, which was the Amazon yard jockey position. Now, occasionally, J.B. Hunt sends out random emails. I always throw that stuff in spam or junk mail and things like that, because that's just what it really is when it comes down to it. But every now and then, they'll send a lane out to carriers and ask us to bid on lanes, and I don't give them free bids either. I always send them back my cash up and let them know that it's three hundred dollars for me to quote them, but you know they never want to, you know, send the money so I can get them a proper quote that they ain't gonna like anyway. But you know, they send me this Amazon yard jockey position. They wanted me to work ten hours a day for a whole week around the corner from the house at seventy dollars an hour. So of course I had to go on youtube and do some research to see what this yard jockey position is and when i found out that all i gotta do is drive five miles an hour around the amazon building and move like two three empty trailers an hour and basically just idle the truck i was all for it i said yeah let me let me go get this a try and at the time i didn't know that you know jb hunt took they split and all that stuff i didn't know I was new to it, even though I was signed up with Amazon, but I was new to it. Actually, at the time, I didn't have the Amazon insurance. Anyways, so I did the yard jacket position. I think I brought in like four, five thousand dollars or something like that. You gotta go back and watch the previous videos to figure out exactly what it is, or just do the math and you'll come up with the gross number. But the fuel for the week was like two hundred dollars. Okay, it was dirt cheap, and of course, it's gonna be cheap because you just going five miles an hour around the building just idling the truck so of course the fuel gonna be cheap but uh after i did that for a week i uh went over to amazon saw the amazon requirements is needed that two million dollar general aggregate insurance called up my insurance agent they told me i just paid two hundred dollars and i could have that crap so i paid the two hundred dollars got that got back on amazon then I started to receive the yard jockey emails from Amazon. To keep in mind, we already at the end of the year. You know, we going into December. Well, we were in December. So uh, Amazon sent me a yard jockey position. Told them I could do it for 100 an hour for a week. Got on that. Grossed about six, seven thousand, something like that. Going into January, and uh, of course, y'all know what Amazon. After the holidays, after New Year's, Amazon slows down. All that stuff comes to a screeching halt. Same thing with UPS and the rest of them. All that stuff comes to a screeching halt. So, made my money. Now, here's another thing you guys got to understand. Because I, I understand a lot of you guys are leasing. You don't have your authority. And you're probably looking at your deductions like, Andrew, this is just not worth it. I don't understand how you run a cash business. Okay, so let me explain. You're leasing a truck, your deductions. If you had this one particular company we, we went over yesterday, you send they busting you upside the head, five hundred a week escrow, thirteen hundred a week trailer note, nine dollars for a ELD device, eight dollars for some type of camera to stairs all day, three hundred dollar cargo, eight dollar occupational, uh, they gotta charge you for the trailer at four hundred dollars. You got physical damage insurance at seventy five Pre-pass at five, all that stuff, twenty five hundred ninety seven dollars. You need to put fuel in the truck. It's so sad, but uh, I understand. If you looking, you looking at me from that perspective, it may seem like, oh, Andrew, you ain't got no money because I'm looking at all my expenses and I don't see how you gonna make it. I understand, truck driver. Now let's look at it from Andrew's actual perspective. I own everything, okay? My insurance after that fifteen hundred down payment. It was about $700 for the month. 
that breaks down to, I don't know, 150 or somewhere right in there, about 150 or 140 uh, a week. Okay, so with my fixed expenses being 140 or 150 for the week, can I go do Amazon Yard Jackie, grow six, seven thousand for the week, or uh, pay two hundred dollars in fuel, get his insurance a hundred and forty, hundred and fifty for the week, and just keep the other, you know, five thousand dollars for example? Of course I can. Now I know what you think. Ain't no yard jockey paying no five thousand. I understand what you're saying, truck driving. That's why I'm talking from my perspective, okay? Because I don't pay escrow to nobody. There ain't no truck notes. Damn sure ain't paying nobody for no ELD at all. I don't pay any ELD fees. I don't pay no keep trucking 300 a week or 300 for the device or one time payment of 150. I don't pay nobody in the United States for an ELD device, okay? I definitely ain't got no camera in the truck. Cargo insurance, uh, that's all, that's the $700 a month for me. Uh, same thing with the rest of the insurance you guys pay. Uh, trailer notes. I don't have a trailer to pay for. Mine is mine paid for. I got a pneumatic tanker. Physical damage. All that stuff is in my $700. Pre-pass. Just a total waste of money for me. I never pay that at all. But uh, anyway, so my deduction is totally different. My fixed cost is insurance, okay? And uh, fuel is not a fixed cost. That's just whatever whatever freight you haul for the week, whatever fuel you put in now, that's going to always be a different number. My fixed cost is just insurance, okay? So, I brought out the blue truck. We rode the blue truck. I paid the insurance, 150 for the week. Gross sit 7000 We had a uh, minor... Uh, truck maintenance issue we had a blown brake chamber guess what i got more mechanics that work dirt cheap 50 hour dirt cheap call him up where you at he had the truck stop some mom pop truck stop working on trucks cool i'm gonna go over here to freight line and get this brake chamber bring it up to you with the truck can you put it on yeah i can have it on in an hour cool no problem went up there got you no know, i got two brand new brake chambers they had two brand new brake chambers installed the check over five thousand dollars for the week what is it to pay this guy from zimbabwe freaking one two hundred dollars it's nothing it's nothing but the problem is like i said after the new year amazon all that stuff comes to an end so what comes next after amazon well i didn't really know if they was gonna keep sending these yard jacket positions so i said you know what my only other options is to either buy a trailer and participate at this $1.50, $1.80, $2 a mile max rate thing that you guys got going on in track and participate in that. I could get a load out trailer every seven to 10 days, constantly switching that out. I could do power only, uh, JB Hunt 360, uh, Night Swift. I can use their trailer, I can go to Prime Me, get their reef and ride that crap at 70% or whatever they pay carriers. All those was options. The problem is I'm not an OTR driver, and all of those options is OTR, okay? I don't want to go go from state to state to state at those type of rates. Now, see, if you guys was hauling for $4, $5, $6 a mile, oh, I'd be all over the country. I, where, where are we going? We need to go to Washington, we going to Washington. We need to go over all them big mountains. We need to go across I-77, Rocky Mountains in Colorado. We going, baby. We going. When the rates is good enough for me to go. Let me give you an example. $15,000 flat top. I take it to Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, I would tell you, man, me, I'm never going to Salt Lake City, Utah in this flat top. Never going. There ain't no rates on low board that's got me interested in going. So, Andrew, why did you end up going to Salt Lake City, Utah with your pneumatic? Well, when they're offering $13,700 to go from Tennessee to Utah one way, we're going to pack our bags and we're going to take this old raggedy, old, I'm talking about old raggedy, falling apart truck straight to Utah, just like I did, get this, collect this $13,700, Pay pilot, 1500 fuel, 
pay the insurance, they 140, 150, go and pay that. Oh, we we we, we blew a a, a freaking uh, tire on the pneumatic. Stop it, TA. Tell them tell them give me one of them brand new tires. I don't want no recap. I don't want nothing used. Give me the brand new. What you got brand new? Put the brand new on. Stopped in Wyoming somewhere at the TA and got that brand new trailer tire. Put that crap on. How you paying cash? Well, everybody else pay credit. Everybody else don't haul for the prices that I haul for. They got to borrow the money. I don't have to borrow the money because I charge so much money that we run. We just run cash over here. I don't have to do pay, play the interest game and catch me on this uh, freaking 18 to 30 some percent interest for the next 30 years on somebody's credit card. I don't have to do that. When you charge enough, you don't have to do none of that crap, okay? Just cash. Cash is it's just so much cheaper. So I just pay cash, okay? Everybody around me, for the most part, they was paying cash. Not everybody, but now we just gonna talk about me. Talk about if you ask them how I was paying, they'll tell you cash. Everybody different though, okay? You know, everybody different. Everybody philosophy is different. That's all you need to know. So I don't want to say what everybody else was doing. But anyways, blew a tire, got it changed, got the freaking Utah perfectly. Nothing happened to the truck. And uh, they rejected the load. And I said, oh, well, I guess this is going on insurance, huh? Nah, it's not going on insurance. They said, Andrew, what did you get to come down here? I said, man, y'all paid $13,700. Cool. We're going to pay you the same thing to take it back. Same load, same trailer. 13000 turn around, go all the way back to Tennessee with it. 22 some thousand dollars for the week seven days worth of work oh i'm loving it i'm loving it pay another 15 to get back across the united states in this old raggedy truck where the sleep is this small and the bed is connected to the seat and i got a bunch of people on youtube laughing because the truck only costs 15,000 instead of 200,000 and you know i understand what you're saying I understand what you're saying. That's when I go, you know, cross country and do stuff like that. When, when you operate like that, it's very hard to, well, Andrew, we got another load for you. You know, what is it? It's driving. How much is it paying? We got dollar, dollar sixty-seven to go from Tennessee to Utah. I rather just sit at the house, man. I, matter of fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna look for something else to do because I don't need that right there. I don't need. You'll never get me to do that, man. You you going you gonna close down waiting on me. To, to, to take anything for those type of rates so we just different now i understand where well, andrew you know with those fits costs you can still turn a profit <laughs> i hear what you're saying drivers yeah i could turn a profit <laughs> i would turn a, the profit just gonna be so small and it ain't worth it just because i can turn a profit don't mean that it's worth it for me to do it's a waste of time and then it's OTR. Then I got to stay out there. Now I went up there for a dollar sixty-seven. I got to come across for a dollar eighty and come down for, you know, a dollar twenty. And okay, well, Andrew, we getting two dollars a mile over here. Okay, well, two and two and two and two. All them twos equal uh, no money for me. Okay, so I don't want to do it. Okay, and keep in mind, I haven't done OTR work since twenty sixteen. You know, I did it for a year, and I'm like, this, this is just not for me, man. It's just. It's not for me, man. For me to just stay in a truck like that, man, it, I got to be getting a lot of money, man. I can't be getting the same amount of money as somebody that's sitting at the house uh, working, you know, with Mr. Charlie home every day is getting, okay? I just go I just go join that. The hell am my OTR for? And they making the same thing at the house. All right, then. So, so I didn't want to participate in the uh, Power Only or the JB Hunt 360 or the Night Swift Power Only or the USA Express Power Only or the Pam Transport Power Only because I was on all these load boards, TMC load board. I didn't want to participate in that. Matter of fact, when I did do Power Only, the only thing that paid, you know, a decent actual rate was the flatbed trailers. I took a flatbed load, I took a step deck load. Those were the only trailers I could find that was worth it. Drive in, I don't think I I only took one load of drive in trailer and it was cheap. It was dirt cheap. It was from Tennessee to Texas, like a dollar fifty, dollar sixty, JB Hunt three sixty. I took it down now uh, when I went to go remember I was going to see about the uh the sandbox crap in the street port, Louisiana. That's how JB Hunt got that cheap. Uh, Fredo Olays load. I call it Olays. Fredo, Fredo, Fredo Olays, baby. 
That's how they got that load down and load to pay them three, four dollars a mile. They pay give it to me for a dollar fifty. You want to know why I don't do it? Okay. Okay. So, so it, it just comes down to the rates. I don't want to participate. So, what do you do, Andrew? You got the dirt cheap insurance. Yeah, we got dirt, dirt cheap insurance. Well, Andrew, you got it's way more profit than expenses. Yeah, it's way more profit than expenses. But I don't want to participate at these rates. I'd rather just part my equipment. Uh, you know, now when it comes to my insurance and things like that, and me canceling the insurance, like I said, I hear what you're saying, Andrew. You got to wait 90 days to work with JB Hunt or, or whatever, whatever these. Tiki Wills and C.H. Robinsons, whatever timeline they got waiting that you got to wait the freaking holiday freight. Look, I don't know anything about all this stuff. When I started my authority, I had a pneumatic trailer and direct customer, and you didn't need no time at all. You just need some insurance. Insurance, you hauling freight. That's the same way I would do it when I restart my authority. Uh, customer, give them my insurance paperwork, and I'm gone. All this waiting, paying some insurance agent. Seven hundred dollars and you ain't even running. It don't even make no sense to me. It's just that's why when you guys go to these insurance agents, they bust you over the head, man. Hey, man, what, what kind of truck you got? I got two hundred thousand dollar truck. Okay, cool. Well, clearly you can afford thirty or forty thousand dollars a per year for truck, right? Right? Because I mean, you got it. You, you, you ride a two hundred thousand dollar brand new truck. Everybody's experience in this trucking world is different. Don't let me discourage you from getting your authority and hauling for whatever rates it is that you haul for. Um, got to do what's best for you. I do know RGN drivers out there with their own authority that's hauling for $7 plus a mile. If I knew how to do RGN and I had an RGN trailer, yeah, I would continue doing that as long as I got freight to, uh, you know, Continue, you know, have income coming in for that, but I'm not a flatbed driver, or RGN, or nothing like that. And uh, I'm never going to invest in no type of drive in game or reefer game where every time you get to the damn uh, loading facility or well, the delivery facility, and you go back out to open the damn door, you wondering when you get ready to open it, is the fucking freight going to fall out the back? Don't forget, I did reefer for night transportation, so. I know exactly what all can go wrong. And when it's your truck, your trailer, your insurance, these are the things you're going to be thinking about every time you open that back door. you sitting over there. you at Walmart Distribution Center because this happened to me. Got a load of freaking, uh, what I have, watermelons or melons or something like that. You open the back of the reefer door. Now, you done put two, three low lights on the back of the load. But because it's so cold in the trailer, that crap done fell off. You open the door and the whole entire trailer rolling out the back. You ain't got Miss Charlie to call. No, you call him progressive. Man, y'all won't believe me. I got this $100,000 load of melons all over the Walmart parking lot. Now that dirt cheap insurance you got, you guessed it. They need a little bit more money come next renewal. It's a company right now filing for bankruptcy. I forgot what they call. It was on the Asian My Channel. They can't they can't afford the insurance. They didn't hear so many claims. It's, they can't afford the new insurance quote. Got to shut down. See, I avoid all that stuff. I avoid all that stuff. I don't. I, I just don't even deal with the freight. That, that, that they got insurance claims. I ain't never had no insurance claims because I do pneumatic. I ain't no insurance claim with no pneumatic. Somebody got to blow the side of my whole entire trailer out with a bomb or something for the freight to go all over the place out the trailer. Don't get me started. Don't get me started now. Like I said, I've been hanging out with Mr. Charlie. I'm going to continue to hang out with Mr. Charlie. And so I see that you guys are making uh, progress in the rate department uh, in the trucking world. Until then, uh, you guys can go from uh, Los Angeles, California to Jacksonville, Florida, up to New York City. Okay. You can grow $7,000. And after all these ridiculous deductions, you can... Uh, Get fifteen hundred dollars, okay, with no taxes taken out. Now me, me and Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie gonna pay me <laughs> the same thing. I'll be home every day with two days off, and I just watch you guys from this TV, comfort in my home, watching you on TV, getting the same thing, going all over the place, okay. I'm gonna go work out in the gym, okay. Uh, cause I'm a high value man now, you know, we got this 100k job, 
So I got to work on myself. You know, we steady losing weight, so I got to keep on working on myself. I need to really get me a special haircut going because we have value now. So, you know, uh, we got to change it up, baby. We need a whole new wardrobe going on. I, shit, I'm ready to get rid of this car. I'm ready to sell this car. I need me a Corvette. That's right, because I'm high value. I'm Corvette. Now, I know you guys are hearing this, and you want to know, Andrew, we're going to do every and anything in our power to call whatever company we see you at so we can tell them that you do YouTube. We're going to tell them you do YouTube so they can fire you. Guys, you're already too late. They already know this. Nine and nine. Boo-boo, baby!